Hi guys, this is Mr. Owens um, from the guidance office and today I am going to do a sample of the Google course selection form. Uh, we are about to enter schedule planning for next school year. So uh, what I'm going to do is take you through the Google form. Uh, we did use this last year, so most of you would have done this before unless you're new to the school. Uh, made a few tweaks to the form. Um, I do want uh, to explain again that this is really just the first step in the scheduling process. Um, you, we, um, we have you guys do this, so uh, this will give you a little time to look over um, the course information, which we've got uh, updated at our website. You can review courses, talk to teachers. Uh, all of you should have met with your counselor by now, and we likely uh, looked a little bit ahead of what courses you would be taking next year. Uh, this particular video is for all upcoming 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So I'll be jumping around a little bit, uh, but obviously the process will be the same uh, for all of you. Um, and, and so again, we're going to have you do this Google form uh, here before, uh, before break. Uh, you'll get a copy of it, um, and, and, and you'll use that to reference then in January once we open PowerSchool up. And then at that time, that's when you'll make final selections. You'll use this form uh, and this planning process to enter your classes into PowerSchool, and then your counselor will meet with you again at that point to confirm uh, your selection. Just remember you can make changes up until May, 4, May 1st. Uh, but this part of the process is important because we want you to now think about, you know, what your schedule should, at least, you know, the basics of what you want and need for your next school year. So I'm going to go ahead and at first go ahead and, and open up what would be a 10th grade planning form. So this would be, <clears throat> excuse me, current 9th graders. Uh, and I'll also point out the difference for the 11th and 12th grade. So, but again, the process would be the same. So please read through this. Uh, we're gonna send this out um, and you guys will just access this Google form and complete this and then I'll remind you or I'll show you what it looks like on the other end. So this will also have a direct link to the video right here. So you can go in and review that. So and make sure you get your name correct. I know it seems silly, but first and last name. The student ID is helpful if you would carefully put that in. Uh, from your student ID, your power school ID, uh, that helps us to know we're matched with the right student and your birth date as, as well. So we tr try to use a number of ways to make sure when we do sorting uh, for when we send the copy of this out that we get the right uh, info to the right student. So those are that's why we're asking for that information. So enter your, your class here. Um, and uh, your smart teacher is helpful. We might do some of the sorting by smart teacher. So diploma goal that you are planning for um, at this point. Again, we always ask what you're thinking about as far as your graduation plan. So again, just give us an update there and your career goal. Um, this link will take you right to the Pathfinder so you can read about courses there. And this is a kind of a quick summary of grad requirements. Uh, that are listed. This is an updated list of all classes for next year. Now, uh, this isn't necessarily uh, uh, every single course isn't available every single grade, but this is a list of all of our classes planned for 23-24. So, again, this is a 10th grade form, So, but the process will be the same, so I'll at least start this one and then I'll probably jump over to the 11th and 12th grade so you can kind of see the differences in those. The one difference I made this year is you're going to go ahead and select your fall course immediately followed by your spring course. Uh, we had that divided up by semester last year. Uh, what's, what's important is to make sure for the four-year courses is that you put the same thing in there. So uh, in junior, senior year, you're going to even have more courses that are separated by fall and spring. Uh, but in 10th grade, a lot of your classes will still just be full year. So you're going to go ahead and make your selection for English. And this is going to be the same for all grade levels. Most of these cores are going to be the same. You're going to make your selection for math. Again, make sure those match. Um, you're going to make a selection for science. 
and again, and you can do more than one science class. I know we have many students that are thinking about medical or STEM fields. If you're taking more than one science, you can add your other science classes down uh, in one of your later classes, but for the science section, you can only select one. Uh, select your world history. Uh, again, this is for 10th graders. And now for 10th grade, class five, six, and seven are open. And this is where you would include maybe a diff an extra science, your world language, PE health, a local requirement, a fine arts class, or any other electives that you're adding in here. Um, if you are taking study hall, I think of go, go ahead and list that for class seven. Uh, if you're not taking study hall, then you would just pick another class. So, uh, and again, those are going to be, again, where you're going to type in. Uh, I'll just give you one sample. So let's say I'm taking Spanish two. Make sure if it's a four-year class again um, that you have the same class in. If it's a different class, maybe you're taking 2D art and drawing. Okay, so then for class six, if you have two different one semester classes. So that's real simple. Again, how that works, and then go ahead and include a couple alternates here. Uh, again, these are not these are things that you decided not to take. Uh, but that you uh, thought about taking. And then for the juniors and seniors, it's even uh, especially important as you guys might have more schedule conflicts uh, that you've selected something else, maybe a second choice of English or a second choice of one of your electives. And then just indicate that you've reviewed with your parent, which I do highly encourage you to do, parent name, and click Submit. Okay, so I'm going to jump over and point out some differences. I won't rehash everything for the 11th and 12th graders. Uh, but again, the process is going to be the same. So enter all your stuff um, accurately, please. Um, and then uh, all this is the same. So now for juniors, you've got some different English course options for the first time. So there's no English 11. So you'll be able to pick from a variety of courses here, including some of which are only one semester. So if you're picking one of these one semester English classes, like I want to take mysteries, literature, for your other semester, you've got to pick something different. For this one, I'm going to do creative writing. Okay, those are only one semester, so you wouldn't pick, this, pick the same thing. Now, if you're doing AP language, for example, that's a full year English course, and you'll pick it for both. Okay, and again, that would be the same for seniors. You're going to pick your U.S. history. Uh, that's available as dual credit or CHAP as well. You're going to select your math class and, and then likely still a science class. Again, also remember there's other science classes that you can take uh, that you can add into your other classes. And then for the one thing I want to point out for juniors, and this is the same for seniors as well, You've got some other options here, like some of you might be thinking about Area 31. So that's going to take up three periods. So you can just type in Area 31, or if you know which one that you're doing, you can put that in as well. But you can actually put that in for, um, for all your boxes here. I won't keep typing because I cl clearly keep making mistakes. So, But you would just type that out uh, for your remaining classes. Um, and then again, include some alternates. And then for the seniors, I want to point out again the differences here. All the same process. Um, there are some different English options for seniors. So, but but again, the same. A lot of the senior options are only one semester. So again, make sure you're selecting a different one for fall and spring. Uh, seniors are going to pick uh, their government and, and economics. And those are generally one semester unless you do the AP version. Um, and then for seniors, you can see we jump right into the to the write-in classes because a lot of seniors are down to just you know a couple things left. So again, you can list other things that you're taking, other college prep courses, um, other uh, dual credit courses, uh, and seniors would be the same. You could type in Area 31. Um, Something different for seniors that would be available would be education professions, and that does take up three periods, so that would be students that are maybe going to go to an elementary school um, and are thinking about being in teaching. Uh, seniors can also do internship, where they get to leave early 
and go to a job or, or career related site and you would type that in um, for, your, for your last two periods just for an example okay so that's basically uh, what I wanted to point out is the I really can't type and I apologize um, I shouldn't do live typing on uh, on a video so anyway again alternates everything else is the same okay so again the way it's going to come out I got to reminder what you guys will get um, on the other end of this is you'll get a copy so here's a, a sample of 11th grade course plan and you can see everything lines up um, and that all looks really good um, and so uh, you'll get a copy of this um, again for 10th 11th and 12th the same um, a senior, I think the senior one I have in here, uh, so you can see how it would look like if you were selecting Area 31, it would just take up the, the last half of the day. If it was internship, it would come up at period six and seven, um, or education professions would fill in uh, these periods as well. Um, but make sure, you know, there's going to still be seven things listed for both semesters for all grade levels. So um, that's basically it. Fairly uh, easy and self-explanatory. Again, this is the first step in the planning process, and this will help both your counselor and you guys to have a copy of your plan, uh, and then we will put all this into PowerSchool in January. So hopefully all that makes sense. Definitely reach out. If you have questions throughout the process, we're here to work, work with you uh, throughout. So uh, thanks a lot. Let us know if you have questions.